So, um, what happened to your brother, exactly? He was riding a quad, and he wasn't wearing a helmet, and he flipped his quad and had a head injury, and um, was ultimately, like, it, it was, I was right there, it was, like, in the middle of the day on the street, so, like, on the pavement behind our house my mom's house and so it was obviously like an emergency people called 911 and he was airlifted to the hospital and was ultimately declared brain dead and um yeah it was that fast it happened in a split second so what's the difference between brain dead and dead does that mean he was pretty much dead on arrival um well, brain dead means that you don't have any, like, brain function. So, like, your your brain stem is what, which is at the very base of your brain, right? Like, at the top of your neck, um, where your neck and your head meet. That's, that's the area of your brain that controls your heartbeat and your... Uh, breathing like you think about breathing you just breathe that's the area of your brain that controls that and other things um but if you don't have that ability to breathe to brain telling your body to breathe that's what brain dead is versus like like dead i think is like when your like heart stops you know if you're yeah like, his heart was still beating. I mean, he was alive on machines, but yeah, that's the best way I know to describe it. Got it. So what did you do to heal from all that? Did you journal? Did you um, seek a counselor and all that? Yeah, I was in counseling, like, my whole entire life. <laughs> um, and I just regular traditional talk therapy was never extremely helpful for me. Um, I found that it just kind of perpetuated a feeling of like being a victim. Um, it, and I never really like learned tools to heal. I was just talking about my wounds over and over and over again. And that's not to say that like therapy is no good. I, I, I don't believe that. I think therapy can be good in, in a lot of circumstances. Um, the modality of therapy that helped me the most was EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing or reprogramming. And that's really a modality that's designed to help it uses bilateral stimulation to help reprocess and reprogram traumatic memories to decrease their intensity. Um, when you have trauma, you have very disorganized memories and thoughts. And, um, you know, obviously, like you have this like physiological response that happens in your body where you're in, like fight or flight most of the time, like you're not storing and processing like emotions properly at that time because you're not like you don't have higher thinking in that time because you're really in that primitive like i need to survive state so um that emdr really helps like reprocess those memories um to decrease the intensity but i also used that i use emdr along with um like somatic work on my own i did Actually, the first thing that I, before I ever did EMDR was meditation. That's what I learned about first. Um, my husband had suggested that I try that. And um, just because I had so much anxiety and panic all the time um, that he said, you should really try something to help calm you down. What if meditation would work? And so I tried it and it worked. Um, and ultimately, like I mentioned before, like meditation for me, turned into a form of prayer and that's how i actually developed a relationship with god and um i started to learn when i 
about meditation, I started to learn about other, like, what is meditation? Why does it work? What are other types of meditation besides like what I was doing at the time, which was guided meditation? And then what are other, what is somatic work and how does it work? And what are other types of somatic work? So I started doing a lot of like EFT or tapping. I did do a lot of journaling. I, I still do a lot of journaling. Um, and then prayer and my relationship with Jesus Christ is really like a lot of where um, I was able to really like be delivered from anxiety and control of um, all of those thoughts and emotions and, mm -hmm. you know, in combination with obviously like taking care of my body better, I was started to learn the importance of like, you know, you don't learn. So at, the, at that time I was just become a nurse and I hadn't really even learned much about nutrition and the specifics of like taking care of your body and um in that way and like they say like oh you should get eight hours of sleep but what happens if you can't sleep because you're so traumatized every time you close your eyes you have flashbacks you know so like learning how to like get rest in my body and um yeah all of those things yeah, I'm a Christian as well, so I just thought I'd ask something. When you started looking into your religion more when you were dealing with the trauma, knowing your experiences with your parents and with the shooting and all the stuff you dealt with, were there certain biblical scriptures that didn't directly mention those incidents, but were you ever triggered by any of them when you sort of connect? Yeah, what I mean is, you know, when you when you think about all the times that you know you dealt with abuse and the school shooting and you know and the other stuff you dealt with were there any biblical scriptures that were somewhat triggering based on the wording rather than because of the idea that they were superstitiously connected to what you dealt with you know what i'm trying to get at um i think so but no uh I, mean, I never had that experience. I actually found a lot of comfort from um, those, you know, any scripture that are seriously seem to be, you know, talking about exactly what I've been through. I find, I think that's the Holy Spirit. I think that's what it is. It's a living, active, you know, scripture it's 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 living and breathing and it's supposed to be that it's supposed to be that connection to all of us and all of our experiences um I have specific scriptures that helped me a lot like romans 88 says god works all things for the, those who love him the first verse i memorized it was the first verse i learned and it was it's a verse that has carried me through many many years and that's why i say when you say i'm sorry for what you've been through I say, i'm not sorry because i know for a fact that god put me in those situations because i had to go through all of that to do what i'm doing now to be where i am now and i feel like my life is so aligned i'm doing exactly what i'm supposed to be doing and it's all because of that <laughs> that makes sense Good perspective. So um, what are you doing now to help others through your uh, business and all that? Help other um, women who experience trauma. And I work with men too, but primarily women um, who have experienced trauma and have, I work really, um, my specialty really is that like trauma, stress, hormone, and gut connection. Um, when you have trauma and chronic stress, you have massive imbalances in your body as a result and that creates dysfunction in your gut and hormonal imbalances as a result um i really pay very close attention to that mind body connection i think the psychology and the physiology cannot be separated and i think so much in traditional medicine we just act like they're multiple different systems that are operating independently and i just don't believe that to be true um so yeah that's specialty is helping women overcome 
the physical symptoms that come along with trauma and chronic stress. Got it. Have you ever considered working with younger teen, younger teen girls now that we all know that high school can be traumatic to an extent because of not just what goes on there, but the hormonal changes of puberty, which can be highly yeah. stressful? Yeah. Actually, I have um I'd love to be to be able to do that. Um I have worked with some like children, not not like teenagers, but like young kids. Um, and I feel like that's, I started my nursing career in pediatrics. That's actually like my, was my first love. And I thought I would be a pediatric nurse for my whole life. Um, I think like that's my, my first love. Um, I would love to be in a position to be able to help like teen and tween girls. I think, um, that would be incredible for the next generation. I think, um, just improving their overall health. Yeah, definitely. So where can people find you? My website is the best uh, way to find me, holistichealthbymelissa.com, or you can find me on social media. I'm on every social media platform at Holistic Health by Melissa. I'm definitely most active on um, Facebook and Instagram. I also have a YouTube channel and um, TikTok and stuff. I just don't post there very often. I see what you mean. So yeah, how can your journey impact the world? So what I love to tell people is that healing is always possible. I I don't care what the situation is, what your experience has been, what your past like, or what the doctors said, healing is always possible. We are divinely created to heal. Um, and I think that that's, that's my take home message always is that just believe in yourself, believe in the power of your body, your mind, um, and you can heal, heal anything. Yeah, for sure. Since I'm a Christian, you know, I'm on the autism spectrum. I have bipolar type two and ADHD, you know, and people have asked me occasionally if, if they ever figure out a cure for those things, would I ever take them? And my answer is no. And the reason why is because it was God's plan for me. And God says, you know, he made man in his image. And so when he made me, by making me in his image, it meant autism and those other two conditions, you know. So I'm not going to change him, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great perspective as well. Yep. And it made me who I am and I love who I am. And, you know, you do as well with, you know, liking yourself because a big part of it is self-love. That's a big part to healing, you know? Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. So that's all I have for now, but I thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. No problem, Melissa. So everybody, before I wrap this up, um, let's have a moment of silence for the victims of the school shooting that Melissa sadly witnessed in three, two, one. Thank you. So everybody, please check out Melissa on her website and her social media platforms. Please hit like and subscribe if you like this video. And everybody, we'll see you next time on R&U.